When we hear about a death of a pregnant woman, it is easy to assume that the death is attributed to pregnancy complications. But here at the morgue, unexplained deaths usually provide multi-layer mysteries to be solved. Deaths attributed to pregnancies don't occur all too often. And it does happen to about 399 females each year. Hi, I'm Dr. E. E for El Radi. In today's case, we represented over 25 year old female. As you see here. And sometimes the joys of pregnancy can mask other things that are not talked about as much. Well, there are certainly no quick answers to this situation. So I shall get going and get started on this case. The first sign of sickness began when our subject started feeling nauseous. Both the wife and the husband thought it was normal because she was pregnant and, and is usually sick. A few hours later, she begins to sweat and complains that her body is feeling warm one moment and cold the next. Her husband then thinks her temperature and she has a fever. He thinks that his wife has the flu, so he gives her flu medication and lets her go to sleep. In the middle of the night, she wakes up in a daze and goes to the bathroom. The husband then hears a thud and rushes to the bathroom to find her on the floor having a seizure. He runs to the phone and calls 911. On her way to the hospital, she dies. Yeah, what's up? Well, nice to meet you. My name is Stephanie Orius, and this is my partner here, Ann Thracis. We're here to ask you a few questions. All right. Come in. Come in. Okay. Hi, Mr. Rome. We're here to talk about, obviously, your wife's death. Um, so I need you to tell me exactly what happened. Well, one morning she woke up. She was feeling kind of sick. She had fever, chills, sore throat, headache, and, you know, it was just kind of terrible. So I thought I want to do something special for her to you know, trying to brighten up her day, trying to make her something to eat. You said you made her something to eat. What did you make for her? Well, I made her an awesome sandwich. What kind of sandwich? Well, she really likes cheese, so I went ahead and made her an awesome cheese sandwich. Did uh, you or your wife do anything else that day? Nope, not that I remember. So how was your marriage? What? What are you implying? I love my wife. Shouldn't be... Focusing on finding what's what, what killed her? Ah, Look, I got access to the questions here. Ah. Okay, well, we have some more questions for you. So, could you show me what ingredients you use to make the sandwich for Alright, fine, fine. I made it, made it with a bagel because mm -hmm. she really loves that. Mm -hmm. I put some cheese, some lettuce, some mustard, you know, really top it off. So that sounds delicious. So, would you have any, have any of those ingredients left over? Yeah, but why do you want to see that for? Sir, just curious. I just want, I might want to make a sandwich. Ah, all right. All right, let's see. Ah. All, right. all right, so it looks like here's some leftover sandwich that she didn't get to. Hey, Mr. Rowe? Yeah. What kind of cheese is this? It looks nothing like I've seen at Super Walmart ah. before. Right? Yes. Oh, that's something special. I went down to the Kazakhstanian market and Got her favorite cheese from her country, and that was a little, you know, something special I want to do for her. Is it from Pasteurized? Huh, what is that? Well, according to the National Food Safety Agency, pasteurization is a process which slows microbial growth in foods. There are two main types of pasteurization used today, high temperature short time and extended shelf life treatment. Ultra high temperature is also used for milk treatment and the high temperature short process. Milk is forced between metal plates or through pipes heated on outside by hot water and is heated to 71.7 .7 degrees Celsius for 15 to 20 seconds. Ultra high temperature processing holds the milk at a temperature of 138 degrees Celsius for a fraction of a second. Oh my god! We have to go! Thank you for your time, Mr. Rowe. doesn't seem to have any bruises in her arm, nothing like that, so it wasn't no severe falls. She doesn't show uh, any signs of any strangling as well, as I can see. 
Homer signs are regular. Now let's perform the wine city. Now her inside do not show any things abnormal, so now we're going to have to look at the brain. All right. Wow. She appears to show some signs of inflamed meninges, but I'm not entirely sure what this can be linked to. Dr. E, I got yes. the blood results. What did they conclude? It appears to be meningitis. Meningitis? Yes. What about the chief? <laughs> um, well, he said he made her a sandwich, and that's when she really started feeling sick. So, I believe that, well, the appears to be from Kazakhstan, is what he told me. And, you know, that obviously some cheeses from uh, the country are pasteurized and it's not really regular. So, I decided, well, we have to check this. I so, see. did you find anything that would confirm it? The cheese not being pasteurized? So, you said. The food was unpasteurized, right? Yeah, right. I did, the cheese was unpasteurized. I know of a bacteria that is found in unpasteurized food, Listeria, monosladegines. And we just found with the lab results that she has meningitis, so... Meningitis could have been from Listeria monosladegines. There, it all fits in, it makes sense. I love myself. This is a clear case of a foodborne pathogen, which clearly took this woman's life. Uh, unfortunately, it took her life, but now we are able to tell her family what exactly killed her and instead of being a pregnancy complication. So, I think I did my job. When we hear about a death of a pregnant woman, it's easy to assume that the death is attributed to uh, pregnancy complications. <laughs> And it does happen to about 399 females each year. Hi, I'm Dr. Arada. <laughs> I was supposed to say E for Arada. That's what my mother did. Hey, I, mean, I wouldn't. So uh, she bought that for me for Christmas. Or maybe, um. Is that how? Wait, we're supposed maybe, to lose while maybe, we're talking? Do I just have to. Yeah, I'm maybe a you should, Maybe you should show her, like, her. <laughs> no. Oh, shoot. Uh, and then one of those, uh, eventually you want to come over and get a zoom in on the cheese. Now, where the hell is the bagel and stuff? It's a bagel. Mmm, that sounds delicious. So, do you have any ingredients left? Well, why do you want to see that for? Sir, I'm just, I'm just hungry, you know. I haven't had lunch all day. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, I'm just curious. There's no need for that. So, can you, I was going to make a sandwich. The main types of pasteurization used today. High temperature, short time, and extended. Damn! <laughs> 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 High temperature or UHT is also used for milk treatment. And the HTST process of milk is for. I can't do that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, according to the National Food Safety Agent treatment, ultra high treatment. Oh. <laughs> we have to go. The cheese. <laughs> okay, go ahead, go ahead. Don't be hurting, wash hands. <laughs> no, dude. More serious, the infection can result in meningitis and septicemia. How can we reduce the results? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that over. How can we reduce the results? Oh. <laughs> I can't What is that part? Uh, I'm sorry, it's ridiculous. Okay, how can we reduce the results? <laughs> what? <laughs> Rigmarole. Go. Do it. This is stupid. Okay. <laughs> Reduce the risk. Risk. The risk. <laughs> <laughs> We're just looking for, you know, any signs of death. It all fits in. It makes sense. I love myself. <laughs> <laughs>